right, the only thing left to do for this first question feedback is to update the marker button. The marker button's down here on the on the main game board and changed its color based on whether the learner answers correctly or incorrectly. Now we have these states right here, right? We have the green for correct and then we have the red for incorrect. So we just need to make uh, an additional change or add a couple different additional triggers that will change the status of our marker buttons as the learner moves through each of our questions. So I'm gonna jump back up here to the Q1 slide. A Couple different ways we can go about doing this. That's one of the benefits to Storyline. I'm going to work from the Q1 question layer. That'll keep all of my logic here for the buttons and I've already verified that everything here is working correctly. So I'm just gonna add a couple uh, additional triggers to um, these uh, submit buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, just select the button and let's add a trigger that says change that marker. So we really can't see it on this layer, but it's down here. So we wanna change the state of in this case, the button marker, and you see how um, Storyline it actually recognizes the objects on the base layer as well, which is just huge. So change that to correct when user clicks the button submit with the condition, right? So just like we did before with the uh, feedback layers, if the shape of button correct is equal to selected, okay? When you click the submit button, if the correct choice is selected, go ahead and also change the button marker to correct state. And I can just copy this and paste it. So I have two of them now, right? So I can just make a quick change. Change it to correct. Nope, now I'm gonna change it to incorrect, right? If it's not equal to selected. So that's just one of the benefits. I just, because I copied and pasted this, I can actually quickly make the change right here. So we just changed it from correct to incorrect. And when it's changing it, basically if it is uh, not equal to selected. So same thing, just asking if this is selected or not selected. All right. And we already added the, let me jump back up here to the slide layers. We already have the, the hide layer for each of these, right? So when we click the continue button, it's gonna jump us back down to uh, the travel game game board. So let's go ahead and just preview our file. All right, so let's try our button and let's go for the correct choice. Submit, there's my correct feedback layer, continue, and there's my green. Now, one thing you'll notice real quick is that this is active. So if we wanted to uh, in, make this inactive or disabled after you've answered in one, here's what you would do. We actually wanna put a different uh, little hidden graphic over here that becomes visible when um, this has been answered. All right, so to do that, we'll go ahead and create a new shape over this. Now, uh, hotspots are really great in a lot of cases. They're invisible buttons. They're a good way to block the cursor from basically revealing that an item has a hyperlink or a trigger on it, but you can't work with states with the hotspots. They're one shape and that's it, one state. So I actually need to work with a regular shape and then just make it transparent. Now, downside to working with the transparent shape is that you might forget that it's there. So uh, just one of those trade-offs between, you know, working with a hotspot. Hotspot's really easy to see because it's got that really, you know, that really bright green color and sort of semi-transparent. So what I'm gonna do here is just take my shape and dial up the transparency to 100% and we can't see it. But maybe for testing, I'm gonna leave it down just a little bit and just helps me know that it's there. And then when everything's working, I'll come back in here and, and then turn that all the way up. So go ahead and click close. And now I'm gonna jump back to my Q1 layer and add one more trigger to the submit button that says, hey, when you click this, change that shape to hidden. But we first need to make that shape hidden, don't we? So hidden, now it's not showing. And what do we call this? Cover one. All right, so I'd forgotten to do that. So now we jump back to Q1 and select our submit button. Go ahead and add a new trigger that says what? Change the state of cover one 
to normal when user clicks the submit button. Don't really care if it's correct or incorrect, unless you only wanted to leave over, you only want, you wanted to leave the incorrect options available so the learner could click them again. Again, totally flexible. I'm just gonna do one for all of them. So as soon as you try, that's it. You get one shot and then you, the button is disabled. All right, so let's go ahead and just try this one now. All right, so here's a quiz. We check our button and let's say we make a correct choice or incorrect choice this time, submit. There's our feedback, continue. And now this is in play and you can see that little blue outline. That's why I like to leave a little bit of this visible when I'm testing, just to verify things are working as expected. So now that I see that it's working, I can come in here, jump back to my layer, right click, and then just choose 100%. All right, so that's all there is to setting up our questions. We have pretty much done all the heavy lifting. What we'll do going forward is just duplicate the slides and duplicate our button and cover graphic for any additional uh, questions that we want. And we'll do that in the next tutorial.